when we work with people with lived experience, we need to value that. And I think paying people um, for their time as members of staff with protected rights around being a member of staff is really important as well. Um, and I've seen people's lives change from stepping out from being, you know, um, a service user into being a, a member of staff and people's lives have changed as a result. There's something really powerful about um, service users working alongside staff that look like them. And I think it's not just about traveling in the same sort of shoes or journey. It's also about reflecting what, what we look like. And I think that's really important. So it's culture, it's the way we look, it's what experiences we've had. And I think people with lived experience bring an element to that that service users can see reflected back and I think and it's and some not all, not in all cultures because for some people that's more difficult I think to open up but I think for some people um, it's easier to have a conversation in a language um, and I don't just mean like a foreign language but in a in the same sort of language that um, that you're the, the person you're working with um, is using. Um, if you're coming things from, from say a mental health perspective actually if you're employing somebody with lived experience of mental health they understand the challenges, they're getting out of bed in the morning, um, the, 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 the real issues that, that people will struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis and actually employing somebody in a, a role where they're going to be beneficial to assisting other people. I think it's important that we move away from the, the paternalistic um, delivery of services across the board. I think it's high time we stop this um, attitude that the services are something that are done to us and rather that they're done with us and the only way you're going to get around that is to have lived experience in the room the only way you're going to stop that happening is to say well actually we need to sort of co-design what you're delivering for us and uh, we need our voice here as lived experience we're the people who are using the service we are the people who've experienced the service and we need to be part of the solution as to how the service improves I were, or we were a pilot project um, supporting um, care leavers. Um, so as developing our service, we've used um, care experienced young people and their knowledge in developing our service. Because, um, you know, their viewpoint of going through the system is really insightful and really powerful. Um, but for, yeah, I've, I've been pushing to get a um, care experienced young person in our team because I feel... We by having forums, you know, we reward them by coming, you know, giving them a voucher or something like that. I think that's a bit, um, you know, we've used them a little bit. They're not being fully rewarded for their real, really powerful viewpoints. And I also feel as professionals, um, we're always trying to fix people. Um, whereas, you know, care experience or a, um, an ex, a, you know, an experienced person is not really. They, they're trying to just meet that person on their level. I work um, for a charity um, that deals with migrants. And I think a really good um, point of having um, people with lived experience as paid employees, so they come with like a different cultural, like references and knowledge that potentially we don't have and can't relate to. Um, so they bring a really like interesting aspect to the services because, you know, they, they understand some of the, cultural differences and things that our clients are facing that we might you know if we think oh that's just kind of normal that's the process but we sometimes fail to realize that you know from different um, communities different societies it's not normal to do things the way we do it so they have that insight as you were saying they just have a different insight than, than what we have no matter you reward them compensate for everything there is an institutional power uh, to make the decisions, always relying on the charities or the organizations. So that's why it's quite essential, actually, to have uh, people with lived experience as staff members, but also actually as leaders of the charities. But if you have staff members and leaders with lived experience, you actually kind of have a better understanding of the problems and actually uh, approach it with a human-centered design approach and actually kind of, uh, you know, address the problems and Design, redesign your services. As um, we're a pan um, disability charity, and I think it's really important for us to employ people with disabilities because they've helped us sort of 
um, create systems and particularly I'm just thinking like creating our website, creating our communications and working with our staff to make sure that um, impairments and disabilities are part of that package so that when we communicate with everybody, um, we've already we've already considered um, visual impairments and hearing impairments and um, physical disabilities and mental health um, requirements as part of our services um, and we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have staff using those systems and working with us to design those systems on a day-to-day -day basis it's not just a bit of consultation here or a bit of checking there it's staff designing for um, people. I think on a like uh, organisational level I think having um, paid um, employees of lived experience can really help like upskill current staff as well if you're le working alongside people with lived experience it's gonna it's a two-way street we'll all learn from each other so I think it's a really good opportunity for that and also I think that services that are co-produced can be like more productive and successful and have like a better buy-in from the clients and therefore just generally the services are going to be more productive um, and also you know contractors and stuff are now looking for co-production and things like that so hopefully we'd get um, more contracts which means more money more services helping more people so I think organizationally it can have real benefits. Whenever we make any service or any product or anything more accessible it, it not only does it benefit the the, the the group that it was designed for, nine times out of ten it benefits wider society. Other benefits to the organisation is that the organisation can get closer to their mission statement, closer to doing what they're saying they're doing. The focus shouldn't just be on the benefit to the individual, it should be in three areas. What is the benefit to that individual? What is the benefit to the organisation? And what is the benefit to wider society? They've got the social skills. They've got the the, the nous, and they've got their, their their character is 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 good enough to do the job. But yet their qualification levels and you know, it's just like why are we not giving the, these people a chance? Because we know for a fact, having engaged with them and having had that one to one interaction with them, they're more than capable of doing that. We're taking on that position. With a job, there, there's an assumption that you will work generally nine to five, Monday to Friday. And people with lived experience, whether it's drugs and alcohol, mental health issues, homelessness, whatever, can't necessarily adhere to that. They, they can't necessarily stick to that. So I think there needs to be a lot of flexibility from employers to be able to work with the individuals to go, right, well, you know, what, what is the best time for you to work? And if that's that they're working from during the afternoon, 10 o'clock at night, if that's what works for them, that's what works for them, and that's when the work has to be done. I think that, and, and I think there needs to be a, a lot more flexibility in jobs for people to be able to work when it suits them, because they may not be able to go up in the morning, they may not be able to, to work at, at the times that our organisations work. For me to get to the positions where I am today, it took me volunteering, took me working part-time, took me doing an apprenticeship, took me lots of steps before I could feel comfortable um, with myself, not as imposter, um, be able to apply for, for jobs. What frustrates me nowadays, because I write about it a lot, is jargon. You know, you, you see this job description that they send out, and it's got all these words that people don't use. It's to make it simple. I would say the way to support somebody, because it is a big thing from going from an art of my experience of is homelessness. Going from a home from being homelessness to getting a home and then going to a job is quite a big move for anybody. Building up a relationship with someone. Um, is probably the most important thing you can do so that you can have a really honest conversation because I think when you start a job you expect the expectations are you're going to be amazing and you're trying to live up to what you've sold in the interview and sometimes you can oversell because you really want the job and sometimes you get in the job and you just go after a couple of weeks you go I've seen people do it I can't do this I've oversold and it's just too hard so just yeah, build, spend time with people, build up relationships so that they can be honest with you. 
if this isn't just done for people with lived experience, but it's done for everybody who's coming in, then you get a much healthier workspace. You really do. Um, as I said before, people could bring their, their whole selves. So I think, yeah, um, induction buddies, um, one-to-ones, um, brought up in the six monthly review, um, and the probation, all of this should be um, ways of checking in with that whole person. What's working well for you? What isn't working so well for you? Um, these are the sort of things that can help with that. Um, let's work together and, and come up with some solutions. Prioritising well-being, especially in times where everyone's working remotely, we can become very isolated and we don't have that like chat in the in the break room, like the downtime. So in the team I work in currently, we do lots of like it's a couple of times a month, so we'll do well-being activities, quizzes, like team breakfasts that have nothing work-related just to, and I think that's just really important for everyone, but especially for those with lived experience, to build those relationships, non-professional relationships within the workplace as well, so that you feel like you've got that support. And like you guys are saying, if they've got a question or they they don't have to go to the line manager because they've got the support and relationships with their peers as well. So We have a very big pop culture in okay. here. Um, so when we, um, when we do some sort of social activities, it always ends up in a bar or in a pub. Um, but some people do not drink or cannot drink. So just, uh, just to be aware of that and, um, prepare your socials around, uh, around people's need and limits. There are quite often employment gaps and skills gaps, um, and trying to get them through the process of recruitment is sometimes, it sometimes needs quite a lot of support and you need to pull out from them what this because I can see what their skills are but they can't always identify them so it's really working alongside them um and I don't I, I don't know whether you know this is a fair process but it's something I feel like I, I need to do um because I'm working with them and I think they'd be really fantastic in the roles so I'm working with them about pulling out what those skills are so they can identify them and then hopefully we'll work on some interview coaching because Lots of them haven't had interviews for years um, and they just have really low confidence and really low self-worth and self-belief. And I know they can do a really good job, but it's about how I can get them through the recruitment process so that we can see, yeah, see them in the roles.